Statistic announces how many people died last year as a result of the winter and cold homes. The figure is up 29% to 31,000 excess winter deaths. The World Health Organization estimates between 30 and 50% of these are as a result of cold homes. People are dying in this country because they can't afford to heat their homes. The companies that run the energy system are putting profit over people's lives. We want democratically controlled public energy. We want renewable energy. 50% of your bill is down to the rising cost of gas, dirty fossil fuels that are causing catastrophic climate change. We are going to march today on NPower. They're the most complained about of the big six energy companies. They put their prices up higher than any of the other big six. They paid zero corporation tax over a three-year period, despite millions and millions in profits. Energy, energy, energy for our dreams, not for, not for corporate greed. NPower's former director was a guy called Volker Beckers. The only relationship that he had with HMRC was not paying tax. Now he is a non-executive director of HMRC. I am not joking. I'm not joking. An NPower customer, NPower, hear this. I am 46 and disabled. Due to the DBWP messing my money around, I got into arrears with NPower. NPower say they can't fit a meter due to health and safety, but they can by breaking my door in and fitting one in a kitchen that's five by six foot and condensation runs down the walls when you cook. Shame! Shame! Shame, Shame on you, NPower! I have taken this to my MP, but NPower say they won't talk to my MP. I cannot ever get through to NPower on the phone. All my de direct debits are stopped as Barclays have frozen my account due to being overdrawn. I'm about to take this to the top. I refuse to be bullied by these people. We've seen income and support and services being stripped away for disabled people right across the country. For the last few years, people are becoming more isolated and more marginalized at home. And there, their ability to clean and heat their homes and eat properly is being stripped away as well. Another says, I have post-traumatic stress disorder following an assault. An assault. I lost my home and live in council accommodation. The energy, the energy companies refuse to remove the meters unless I pay 300 pounds each, and I can't afford that. I worked for 16 years before my attack, so I've paid into the system. I'm fed up with being attacked by this government and made to feel like a scrounger and a thief. Then a woman says, I had to leave my job as I was sexually assaulted. I had a breakdown and was unable to cope. One day, British gas bully boys turned up. There were four men outside the house with three cars. I was hiding in the kitchen, hoping they would go away, but I heard them breaking in and stopped one with his hand in the door, unlocking the chain. This is somebody who's a survivor of sexual assault, remember. She says she telephoned British Gas and a helpful employee arranged a payment plan, but a couple of weeks later, I returned from a doctor's appointment to find that British Gas had broken into my home and fitted a meter. Another one, I'm almost 63 years old and my 16-year-old boiler is broken. I go to bed early, between 6 and 8 p.m. to keep warm. What sort of a life is this? I'm from the Greater London Pensioners um, Association. And you look at all this money and all this wealth that's created round here, and at lunchtime in these cafes, champagne corks will be popping, and they'll be celebrating how much extra bonus they've made. And there'll be poor people who can't put the switch down on the heating, but will take themselves off to the nearest shopping centre and walk round there all day so that they can delay putting the heating on when they get home. Another says, the cold has a severe effect on my health. In cold, my muscles tense and make my chronic pain worse, so I cannot go out or do anything, not even move about to warm myself up. I then find sleeping difficult as I'm in so much pain and so cold. Another says, I work full time and my wife works part time. As we have a child of two years old, we can only afford to have the heating on one hour a day. One says, I'm a mother to four children, twins and three and a half, a nine-year-old who's autistic and a 12-year-old. 
This winter, we can't heat our home at all because I can't afford it. When you actually see the people that come to us that have to make a decision whether they heat their homes or feed their children, and you see those individuals and it hits you so hard because parents are so frightened of saying, well, I can't afford to heat my home because they know that social services will get involved and people don't believe it happens, but it does. If you can't afford to feed your children or heat your homes, they take your children away from you. These aren't parents that can't parent their children or these children aren't being neglected. The government is neglecting them. Empower, you're a disgrace. Bring down the big six! 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 When profits are up 75% in such a short period of time, we know there is something wrong. And we're out here today to make sure that everybody else knows there's something wrong. The company should be taken back into public ownership. We didn't have fuel poverty before. They were privatised by Nigel Lawson, the climate denier. What we're arguing for in the One Million Climate Jobs campaign is that we need a coordinated national climate service like the National Health Service. Yes. And that way we can tackle climate change and we can tackle fuel poverty and we can start moving forward to a much more democratic society. People power not end power! People power not end power! Bring down the big six! Bring, Bring down, down the, the big, big six! six. People